folks, I'm Paul. You've landed on the Timberwalkers channel. Today I'm going to be installing a footbridge over this small stream. Now you might look at this and think, oh this is pretty easy just to hop across. But my wife and I, as we've gotten older, we <laughs> find we want to do less and less hopping. So uh, where I can, I try to make the trails through our property easier. And one way to do that is uh, put in little foot bridges over small streams, ravines, things like that. Having foot trails through the property is a wonderful addition if you're a woodland owner, owner whether you have 10 acres or 100 acres or more. It gives you the ability to get out, enjoy your property, monitor the property for trespassing, keep tabs on the growth of the trees, etc. Uh, if you enjoy viewing wildlife, uh, wildflowers, you get to do all that. Now, of course, having vehicle access through the property is a big plus. And if you've got logging roads, uh, fire breaks, where you can get a small tractor or a four-wheeler or even a, a, an off-road vehicle, that's a big plus. But there may be parts of the property where you don't have access to. And having uh, foot trails through the property is a big plus. And that's where... Uh, you might find a need for a small footbridge like I'm going to demonstrate today. Here's the bridge I built to get across this small stream. It's eight foot long and that really should be more than adequate for the width of the stream that we're dealing with here. As you can see the decking material I've used treated plywood I actually prefer using five quarter inch deck boards, but uh, I happen to have some leftover treated plywood from another project. And uh, I'm a big believer in using up scraps, so I've got almost no money invested in this. Now, when you're going to cross the stream, it's a really good idea to make sure you understand where the high water level is because you don't want to put a lot of effort and time and possibly money into building a bridge and just have it washed away or damaged in the next rainfall. Now this stream I have not noticed a lot of water coming through it. I do have other streams on the property that do get quite a bit of flow so I think I'll be okay here. The other thing obviously you need to take into account is building the bridge to support an adequate amount of weight. You certainly don't want you or perhaps a guest who's enjoying the property with you to be walking across the bridge and have it fail. So you want to take that into account. If you're crossing a larger stream, you may even want to do some research into loads and design, perhaps even consult an engineer possibly, just depending on the situation. But you certainly don't want to take any chances. Now, my original idea for this bridge was to just use ripped 2x4s for the main supports. And by ripped, I just mean I cut each 2x4 in half long ways. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the, the, the width there of that uh, main beam is half of a 2x4. Uh, but I did a little test uh, laying the bridge across a couple of sawhorses and it really just did not feel supportive enough. So I decided to shore it up a little further. I should also mention that the ripped in half 2x4s it's a very good technique in certain situations it just didn't happen to work in this one but it is a nice way in certain situations to get adequate strength and cut down your weight by 50 percent but i think the span was just too long in this situation for that to work out well
this is the bottom of the footbridge and I've added some additional reinforcement with a couple of five quarter inch deck boards screwed in to the bottom. Now unfortunately the place where I'm going to be installing the bridge doesn't have easy vehicle access so I'm going to transport it on my trusty hand truck and I'll try to edit out the part where it falls off the hand truck and I'll start cursing. Now, I'm actually not finished. There's a couple more things I want to do to finish this off. One thing I want to do is on each end, I want to set the end on maybe a 4x4 four four going crossways or maybe a cedar log uh, or possibly even a railroad tie if I got really ambitious. So do that on this end. And also on that other end, set each end on a, on a, a cross piece. Uh, and that's going to get it up a little bit higher. As you can see, I don't have a lot of clearance here under the bridge. And uh, raising it up some will give me a better chance of surviving uh, or the bridge surviving any kind of high water event. And then the other thing I would like to do and will do... Uh, on another day probably is I will uh, drive some metal stakes in to anchor it and I'll just uh, drive a stake in on each side of the bridge here and then on the other side as well and then fasten the stake or the stakes to the bridge uh, with nails or something so uh, but that'll give it even more security against any kind of high water event. And here on this other bridge you can see where I've set it on top of railroad ties at each end and also staked it into the ground with these metal stakes. Here's another example of a small footbridge and as you can see on this one I used five quarter inch deck boards for the decking material. The other thing I did is I bought these stair treads to give some traction. This bridge is very slippery when it gets a little bit of moisture on it. The stair treads come with an adhesive backing but they just wouldn't stick. And I tried construction adhesive to no avail. And finally, the uh, best solution I found was these little uh, roofing nails which hold it in place just fine. Now this little footbridge is adequately sturdy, I think, for what I needed, but it will take quite a beating out here from the elements. Even though I've used treated wood, it will decay and degrade over time, and it will need to be checked and thoroughly inspected on a regular basis to make sure that it continues to be safe. Okay folks, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. This is my first YouTube posting on the Timberwalkers channel, but I hope to do more. So if you'd like to go ahead and subscribe, that way you'll be notified when future videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and I hope like me, you'll take some time to enjoy life in the woods.